Davos, Switzerland, if the World Economic Forum gave President Trump a break from his political and legal troubles at home, for his eldest daughter it presented another opportunity to stride across the world stage. Ivanka Trump, a White House advisor, was presented at this conference of global elites as a principal second only to her father, even as she traveled as part of a delegation that included all of the president's most important economic advisors. She shared top billing with Mr. Trump Wednesday morning at a breakfast for corporate executives, including the chief executive of Apple, Tim Cook, which she co-hosted with the president and helped organize. There, she took precedence over four cabinet members and the president's top economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, who were also in attendance. She also organized Mr. Trump's dinner meeting Tuesday night with global chief executives, and participated in a bilateral meeting with the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan. She sat for an interview with the Fox Business host Maria Bartiromo, and she was the sole advisor Mr. Trump mentioned by name during his 30-minute speech on Tuesday. Under Ivanka's leadership, our pledge to America's workers has become a full-blown national movement. Mr. Trump said, referring to an effort to get employers to expand worker retraining. It was a ringing endorsement in front of a moneyed crowd for a program, a set of pledges that so far are more promised than realized, that Ms. Trump has been championing for the past year in lower-profile appearances across the country. After a difficult first year in Washington, during which Ms. Trump struggled to find her lane, the challenges faced by the American worker have given her what she describes as a passion project. Davos was just the latest international gathering in which the president's daughter has taken a major role. And foreign government and business leaders who were once skeptical of her presence, like her father, she had no background in government, have recognized the amorphous power held by Mr. Trump's family members turned official advisors. Ms. Trump used a news conference at Davos about reskilling workers to promote what she called the president's freedom agenda, which she claimed was chipping away at income inequality and bringing more women into the labor force. Dressed in a pale blue fitted pantsuit that stood out in a sea of black, she kept to her studiously optimistic message, saying that 400 companies had signed a pledge to expand worker training programs as their industries evolve. That's close to 15 million students and workers, she said. 15 million lives impacted, 15 million families impacted. In an interview, Ms. Trump said she planned to continue talking about workforce development at home, as part of a campaign message that will help her father. She is seen by campaign officials as one of the top fundraisers and surrogates for the re-election campaign, though she said, I've always bristled at the term surrogate, which she said suggests merely talking about things I haven't been involved in. Her draw comes in large part because of her high name recognition across the United States, Aid said, and her potential to sway the critical voting bloc of suburban women with a message about newly enacted benefits that she championed. In the White House, she pushed successfully for an expanded child tax credit, though much of the benefit goes to well-to-do families, and paid family leave for federal workers. I do think we have a lot of wins on the board the American people don't know about, she said. Ms. Trump, however, views herself less as a political voice like her brother Donald Trump Jr., and more as someone who can mobilize voters and help her father through a focus on two issues the Democrats claim as their own, women's empowerment and the American workforce. Ms. Trump said she would continue to be focused on the areas where I've helped the president move the ball. I gave up my life to move to Washington to try to help Americans and I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish. Ms. Trump has become a fixture at major international gatherings since she raised hackles at her first one in 2017, when she briefly took her father's chair at a Group of 20 summit meeting in Hamburg, Germany. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe of Japan invited her to the Group of 20 meeting last July in Osaka, where she gave a keynote address on women's empowerment, and then delivered a video report on Mr. Trump's dealings with foreign leaders. A brief video from a private gathering, showing her awkward foray into a conversation with the leaders of France, Britain, Canada and the International Monetary Fund, quickly went viral and fed criticism that she was out of her depth. Later, she accompanied Mr. Trump as he crossed the demilitarized zone, stepping into North Korea and meeting Kim Jong-un, an experience she described at the time as surreal. At the Doha Forum, a Middle East conference, Ms. Trump was interviewed on stage by the State Department spokeswoman, Morgan Ortegas, who came under criticism for asking her questions about her pet project on female entrepreneurship while ignoring the White House's Middle East policy. 
In Davos, Ms. Trump was careful not to pick a fight with one of the other most prominent female figures attending the World Economic Forum, the Swedish climate activist, Greta Thunberg. Her father implicitly criticized Ms. Thunberg, saying that climate activists, with their pessimistic messages, were the heirs of yesterday's foolish fortune tellers. I am fundamentally a believer in the power of optimism, Ms. Trump said in a phone interview, echoing one of her father's lines. But she added of the 17-year-old Ms. Thunberg, I'm not going to criticize anyone who's bringing their energy and voice. That's not my style. I think she's elevated awareness and that's a positive thing. Early in the administration, it looked as if Ms. Trump was embracing at least some of Ms. Thunberg's urgency about climate change. During the presidential transition, she brought in former Vice President Al Gore to discuss the issue with Mr. Trump and sat down with Leonardo DiCaprio, who gave her a copy of his documentary, Before the Flood. But after she and her husband, Jared Kushner, lost an internal debate about withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accord, she has gone quiet on the issue. In the interview, she placed the emphasis on finding solutions rather than raising alarms. I believe in American innovation and global innovation, Ms. Trump said, adding that only a purely pessimistic outlook is not going to help us solve the problem. With the Senate holding a trial on the impeachment of the president, Ms. Trump also expressed frustration about the political and legal quagmire that her father is set to return to in Washington. Our actions over the last two weeks have stood in really stark relief against the priorities of others in Congress, she said. As for whether the Senate should subpoena witnesses, Ms. Trump remained vague. I have an opinion but it would be one voice in many, she said, so I've largely deferred to the legal team.